Kit Zero Survival here with a very special video brought to you by Pro Camp Tech. They sent me all these tenders you see here, four different kinds to be precise. We're going to go over them in detail. First up is the Fire Strip Roll, one of my personal favorites. It comes in a roll of 55 feet and is kind of like duct tape, but you use it for fires. It's their most compact tender and it folds up quite nicely. You can fit it into a wallet, you can wrap it around a flashlight, wrap it around a lighter. Do just about anything you can think of with it because it's very akin to paper. It's coated in wax and very, very water resistant. Next up, you'll see the fast fire sticks that I've cut up into a couple of discs in preparation for this video. So that way they can fit into the Altoids tin we're going to use. The third fire stick puck has a little bit of brown stuff on top, which is actually their ultimate fire tinder that I added into that one just for fun. The last item you see on the tray here is their fire plugs. Those are very handy for EDC kits. They're very, very portable and they're pretty easy to break up and spark with a ferro rod. I'm using just your everyday Altoids tin that I emptied out for this particular video. I'm going to end up cooking a pork kebab over an open flame, but more importantly, we're going to show you how waterproof these really are. We're going to submerge them in some river water, followed by starting a fire in the rain with them while they're still wet. So that's a lot of water on top of water. And most tenders do not like water, but these are from Pro Camp Tech, so they're actually really good quality and can handle that with no issues. You can fit quite a bit inside of a little Altoids tin. That's why I decided to make this kind of video because everybody likes Altoids tin kits. Plus, being able to do one exclusively for fire makes it that much more fun. It's a really nice way to go ahead and keep your fire tinder with you at all times and make it look snazzy as well. You can fit quite a bit in here. This is the ultimate fire tinder that I mentioned earlier. It's that brown stuff you see on top of the fire puck there in the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and pile as much as I can on top, just to kind of, you know, fill it full and make sure we fit as much as we can into our little tin for future use. Make sure we pick it all up and don't leave any scraps behind. This is my favorite fire tinder because it's the easiest to spark with a ferro rod or a lighter. It ignites very, very quickly and it's the easiest to use with your hands. It doesn't take much to pull it apart and to dry it out and it's ready to go and very fibrous to catch those sparks from any ferro rod. We're going to close it up now and use a ranger band in order to help keep it closed so it doesn't open up in our pocket and that gives it a little bit more waterproofing but keep in mind that that does not make this Altoids tin completely waterproof by any stretch. I waste no time I just plunk it right into the water to show you what's going on. I have my head camera that way you can see everything from my point of view went ahead and got just a random piece of wood. I was hoping it would help it sink all the way to the bottom since I couldn't find any rocks nearby that were loose that were also small enough to fit into that container. But you get the idea. I'm getting it completely submerged in water, letting the chamber fill up, and making sure that it stays wet and cold. Here's the pork I brought with me. I seasoned it with camp mix, which is my favorite seasoning of all time. I also have my little camp stove that you've seen me use in other videos, and I put it on top of a rock to be extra safe. That way we can make sure that we're completely safe when using fire. And in the background there, I have a miniature fire extinguisher just in case. Plus it's raining, so I knew I was being redundant with the safety precautions, but it's always good to make sure that you have everything under control when using fire. Now that we've gone ahead and soaked this tinder for a while, let's get it out and get it started. So as usual, I break it up a little bit, make sure to try and get out what water I can from it. That way it's not completely soaked, you can flick it around a little bit or wring it out. Whatever you got to do to get it dry, you would definitely want to get out all the excess moisture you can. Now it's still going to be wet because it was soaked, but it won't be so wet that it can't start. I find multi-tools really good for preparing tinder, not only because it has a pliers where you can pull at it and tear it a little more, exposing the fibers more easily, because when your hands are wet and it's waxed tinder, it's kind of slippery but it also has like knives and saws and things like that you can use to shred and tear at tinder and make it even more fibrous than usual. This is my ferro rod from my two day trip. It works very good. It's from Bayite and it's my all time favorite and best ferro rod. As you see, just a couple sparks and it's already ignited the tinder. That's how good of a ferro rod that is and how good of a tinder Pro Camp Tech has. Next, I'm gonna get the stick ready for the kebab. So it's just a branch I randomly found on the ground uh, more like a little twig actually. So I just went ahead and shaved it off with my knife. That way I can make sure that it's nice and clean because you never know what came into contact with that before you got to it. So I shaved off the bark and I held it over the fire 
That way it can kill any germs and more or less sterilize it. They added a little bit of carbon to it, but I'd rather have that than any possible germs or viruses that were on it. The multi-tool is actually good for rearranging your tinder or your kindling in a small camp stove like that. Because it's already lightweight, you usually have your multi-tool with you. And it just makes getting the pot off there a little easier because you can grab with the pliers. And overall, it lets you tend to the fire more easily. Let's go ahead and get to cooking. So you can use anything you want, whether it be camp mix, garlic, MSG, salt, pepper, whatever you like to season with. And this is a fun little way to test out your tenders, see how hot they get, how long they last, to see if you can cook your own pork kebab over a small open flame just like I did. I run my hands over the fire just a bit to help sterilize those two because they were touching the pond water. And we want to make sure that we overall stay clean so we don't accidentally get any germs or viruses or bacteria or any other things that are dirty in water into our bodies. You don't want to touch your eyes with dirty hands. You don't want to do anything that will make you sick out in the wilderness. Because if you're in a real survival situation and you get sick, it's going to be that much harder just to keep going and to get out alive. It ended up not taking as long as I thought to cook them. Now, here's a spoiler. I actually do end up burning them moderately badly because I wanted to make absolutely sure they were done inside and they did collect the carbon quite quickly. Now, typically I would use a cooking pot of some sort in order to make sure that they cook a little cleaner, a little more easily and a little more evenly. But there's nothing wrong with practicing just using your open flame in case you don't have anything else with you. Now, traditionally for a fire, I would of course have a lot of kindling nearby keeping it ready to go and my logs I'm going to burn for an actual fire but this is just to cook a kebab and we're primarily going to use just the tinder for the fire and the actual cooking. And then I'll also showcase how long these burn even in the rain. So what I did here was wrap the, some of the fire strip roll around a little branch to make a little twig match so to speak. I use my waterproof electric lighter to ignite it. And this is a fun thing you can do to make your own matches, you know, your own survival bushcraft style matches or something along those lines. You could wrap that around maybe a fast fire stick even if you wanted to or something else probably in order to make it last even longer. But this is just a fun thing I've seen other people do on Instagram and I figure, heck, I'd give it a try too. And it's nice because it makes it easier to insert it after it's lit into the stove and gives keep it going. So here's the moment of truth. I had a little bit of kindling to prolong the flame. But now we have my blackened pork kebab. It's honestly pretty good. It seems like the heat seared the outside and kept the seasoning really flavorful on the inside because you could taste the seasoning really well, which I like because I do like my can't mix seasoning. Granted, I would like it to not be anywhere near as burnt as it was because I don't like that on the outside. A lot of people do. I personally don't care for it, but I'm still practicing cooking over an open flame in this way without any kind of pan or pot or water bottle or other cooking utensils. I'm going to demonstrate the waterproofing once more by picking up the rest of it that's still flaming and dunking it right in that bucket I have full of water. As you can see, it burns and floats at the same time, making this very, very high quality tinder. It's by far the best tinder I've ever used and I've tried lots of different types of tinders. And even more, they're cost effective. It's not a super expensive item. I'm going to drain the rest from this tin just to show you how much was really in there. Make sure to pick up some tinder from Pro Camp Tech and the link in the description below. And as always, keep moving. Hi, Kit Zero here. Hope you loved that video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed by hitting this button here and then hitting the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. You can also check out these videos here for recommendations and to see what else I'm up to. And as always, comment below with what you like about this video and what you'd like to see on the channel. And until next time, keep moving.